you're sitting with a group of friends and someone suggests something, maybe a movie, a restaurant, a trip, you're not really into it, but everyone else seems on board. So you go along and you smile, you nod, and later it turns out that no one actually wanted to do it. They just thought that you wanted to do it. This isn't just awkward, it's a psychological trap, and it's called the Abilene Paradox. And it shows how trying to keep peace and follow others can quietly lead us toward decisions that no one actually believed in and no one actually wanted. Not even the people making them. So let's discover that. The term Abilene Paradox comes from a true story. In the 1970s, management expert Jerry B. Harvey told a story about a hot day in Texas. He was visiting his in-laws sitting on the porch when someone suggested a two-hour drive to Abilene for dinner. No one really wanted to go, but no one wanted to rock the boat either, so they all went. It was long, hot, the food was bad, and when they got back, they realized the truth. None of them wanted to go. They just thought everyone else did. And from that strange little trips, a big psychological idea was born. The Abilene Paradox isn't about peer pressure exactly, it's about false agreement. When everyone agrees to something they don't actually support or agree to, just to avoid conflict. Scientists believe that this phenomenon happens because of the fear of confrontation, desire to be liked, assuming others know best, and avoiding discomfort. We think we're being agreeable, but what we're really doing is lying nicely. And the worst part, everyone's doing it at the same time, so we often end up doing something that no one wants altogether. It's not just road trips and family dinner though. The Abilene paradox show up in boardrooms, project teams, in relations, and even in politics and other very big decisions. A company might approve a bad strategy because no one speaks up. A couple might agree to move cities even though both secretly hate the idea. And soldiers might actually follow a very dangerous order because everyone assumes others agree. This happened in the 2003 invasion of Iraq. Some historians argue it partly stemmed from a groupthink scenario where key leaders in the US government agreed to a course of actions without voicing their doubts, not because they believed in it, but because they didn't want to challenge the momentum. It's not just tragic, it's actually terrifying. The silence becomes a decision too. Psychologists have actually studied this phenomenon for decades. This phenomenon is related to pluralistic ignorance, when people privately reject an idea but assume everyone else accepts it. So no one speaks up, and social conformity, made famous by the Ash experiment where participants agreed with obviously wrong answers just to go along with the group. The brain literally lights up in discomfort when we feel socially out of sync with everybody else. So sometimes agreeing and even falsely following feels safer than standing alone. But it creates a fake consensus among the group, and this fake consensus makes real problems for the group. Why are people complaining? More and more people are frustrated. In politics, in world culture, in group dynamics, you'll hear things like, no one ever listens, why do we do it this way? I thought this was what everyone wanted. These aren't just complaints, they're signals. People are starting to question the silence to ask, Wait, do we actually want this? That's a good thing, because when we stop pretending to agree, we open the door to real conversation, even disagreements. And that's where better decisions may come from. But hold on, cooperation isn't the enemy. Sometimes going along with a group is kind or efficient or even wise. Every society needs a little give and take. The paradox is, isn't that we're too agreeable. It's that we're not too honest about it. Healthy groups don't just agree, but they also ask questions such as, I'm not sure, or what if we didn't? Or actually, I'd rather not go to Abilene. 
The Abilene Paradox is a strange little trap we often all fall into, not because we're weak, but because we're trying to be kind. But real harmony only happens when people feel safe enough to speak. Not everyone has to agree, but everyone should feel allowed to disagree, because sometimes the worst decision comes not from saying yes, but from being too afraid to say no. The Abilene Paradox is called a paradox because it flips our understanding of group decision making and on its head. Normally, we assume that when a group makes a decision together, it reflects what most people think that group actually want. But in this paradox, everyone ends up agreeing to something that has no agreement and that no one actually wants it, simply because each person thinks that everyone else wants it. This creates a strange situation where the group collectively chooses to go in a direction that no one in the group actually wanted to go to. That contradiction of agreeing to a choice you personally disagree with just to go along is what makes it so paradoxical. Each person is acting based on a false belief about the other's preferences, and ironically, everyone is trying to avoid this false belief and trying to avoid conflict or disapproval. But they end up generating even more of it by not speaking honestly. So this paradox is not just about being pressured by a strong majority; it's about people imagining a majority that doesn't even exist, and the result is a group trapped in a shared illusion where conformity and silence lead to a collective decision nobody is happy with, and yet no one questions it until it's too late. Unlike traditional groupthink, which often involves pressure to conform, the Abilene paradox can unfold even in groups that value individual opinions, because the breakdown happens internally. Each person censors themselves, assuming their honest input is unwelcome. It shows how dangerous it can be when people prioritize imagined group unity over real communication. And how easily misunderstanding can spiral into collective failure, even when everyone has the best of intentions not to do so. So, what do you think? Have you ever made the same mistakes? Drop a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content on the No Brainer for Science, History, and Philosophy, and check out our Instagram and X for more content.